So quick overview of Dart. It, is, uh, it was developed by Google in 2011. It was originally meant to be their replacement for like a more of like a modern JavaScript. Um, and, but that kind of quickly developed into more of like a full-blown object-oriented programming language that we see today. Their real goal with it was to, like, and they've succeeded, was to develop a language that allows you to deploy a single code base to multi-platforms, so Mac, Linux, Windows, very easily. And then to kind of further that mission of multi-app uh, multi or multi-platform support, they released an awesome UI development kit, Flutter, in 2017. And Dart is the, the language that you implement Flutter in. And we'll, we'll get to Flutter in a bit. Um, so let's go over the benefits of Dart. So like I said, biggest thing is single code base, multi-platform. And by multi-platform, obviously I mean Mac, Linux, Windows, but this also is mobile, iOS, Android, and then also the web. It, it is like extremely easy to have one single Dart code base and just compile it for any platform you want. It's a, just a massive benefit, um, which is great. So then next, the, the awesome benefit that, um, that Dart has is flexible execution. So um, there is just-in-time execution and ahead of time, or just-in-time compilation and ahead of time compilation. And you use these for two purposes. Um, one, so JIT is when you're in debug and it allows you to quickly, um, to quickly make a change in your code and see that in the front end. So you don't have to completely recompile your application. It makes our development cycles like very, very fast. You don't, have to, you don't have to wait five minutes for it to recompile. Um, if there's any like C++ or C engineers out there, you know the pain of having to wait for like <laughs> your dynamic library to recompile for like 10 minutes at times. Um, so this, is, this allows it to be instantaneous. But then when you're ready for production, we have ahead of time compilation, which, um, which makes the app run extremely fast. The boot up's much faster, it's just high performance. But JIT is awesome and it really uh, improves our development cycle. So cool, so moving on to um, the kind of like how, how Dart isn't the most optimized language, but it does have some ways to, to make things run fast. Um, and that is concurrency and parallelism, two high concepts. Um, so Dart implements concurrency through asynchronous programming. And for those who don't know, kind of the difference between concurrency and parallelism. Um, concurrency is where, where you have multiple tasks running on one single thread. And the, it's kind of intelligently switching or efficiently switching between them. Um, Whereas parallelism is where you have two tasks running on two independent threads, and they're they're truly running in parallel. Like a, 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 I think a nice like visualization for this <laughs> is not for, for those who aren't familiar with the concept. Um, is it, let's say you you're in the kitchen and you you're a chef, there's a chef and you have two dishes to make pasta and a salad. <laughs> so it, with concurrency, you're, the chef, the single chef is going to go start boiling the water, and then while the water is boiling, they're going to go chop some vegetables. As soon as the water is boiling, they're gonna add the pasta, and they're gonna go back to completing the salad. Um, so I'm gonna pop up here. And so that's efficient because they're waiting for like kind of the optimal times to switch between them. Um, and then let's take parallelism. Now you throw two chefs into the kitchen. One is fully dedicated to making the pasta. One is fully dedicated to making the salad. And obviously <laughs> you can you know, complete them both much faster that way. Um, but uh, Dart has both of those options. So you can use asynchronous programming, which is great for concurrency and for parallelism. Uh, you can spin up something called an isolate, which is like uh, explicitly dedicates a thread to run whatever task you want. Uh, and that's really nice. Uh, so cool. So moving on, Dart has awesome core libraries, so like pretty much everything you need, like that you'd expect from, from, a, from like a modern library. So it has file IO, math, HTML, um, encoding and decoding what have you, so a lot of options there. Integrate, um, pub.dev is their library, their site. Awesome things on there, really nice UI, simple to find what you need. And then finally, it, it's extremely easy to learn. <laughs> it's like, the, if you look at the syntax of language, if you programmed in like Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, when it's, it's really pretty simple to digest. Like I, I came from a Java and Python background and when I started at Pieces and I picked it up within pretty easily within a couple weeks. It was, a, I, I think I wrote, I committed my first piece of code and on like the first day. So it's, it's really, you can do it for sure. I trust you guys. Um, so cool, let's move to Flutter. So like I said, developed by Google in 2015. It's their open source kind of UI development kit. Um, and yeah, it's built specifically to be deployed to multiple platforms with a like consistent UI. And so what does it offer? Um, in that kit, you have all sorts of like organizational layers, so layouts for like lists, rows, grids, things that are like kind of tough to program by hand sometimes. 
Um, then you obviously have input fields, buttons, color palettes, uh, things for kind of scrollable lists, things like that. A anything you need for like a modern UI. Uh, it's, I know like, from talking to our front end developers, they, they, this is a lifesaver for them to not have to rewrite a lot of these components by hand. <laughs> it's really, and they look nice and they're interactive. Um, so very cool. And then the next big thing is the hot reload. So this is, um, has, it says it's thanks due to the just in time compiling that I mentioned for Dart. So um, you can make a change in your Dart code that, in your Flutter UI and it will immediately, once you hot reload, do a, have a, its impact on the front end. So you can change the color of the website or you can add a new button and immediately you'll see the impact and the development cycle is just very fast there when, when you don't need to wait for the entire, entire app to recompile. So that's really nice. Uh, and then finally, the super consistent performance across platforms. So, and that's due to Flutter's custom rendering engine. So a lot of apps, when they're deployed to multiple platforms, they'll have, they'll have to use kind of native UI components to, to render, but Flutter has their own. That is like, they have complete com control over the entire process. Um, and so it's consistent FPS across all platforms and the UI obviously stays the same. A lot less work and it's, it's really nice. We, we, we love it. Yeah, and a couple examples, who's using Dart and Flutter? The New York Times Games app, so you're playing Wordle. That's Flutter. Um, all things Google, obviously, because they developed it. So Google Maps, Google Pay, um, Google Earth, so the Sonos app, the eBay app, and then most notably, if you've seen the screenshot here, uh, Ubuntu actually said that it is now like, the default choice for apps developed for, for Ubuntu, which is pretty cool. So that's definitely the most notable. That's awesome. 